All right, I am back. Oh, thanks, Thar, for bringing up all the things that people can uh, choose to purchase, some for themselves and some for me. I want to get some more stuff from uh, Designed by Humans. Did the, did the music stop? That, that's awkward. Why Sorry about that. Yeah, man, let Shakespeare make fun of you so that he can say he loves you. How dare you? Good day, Mistress Lania. Pray, come in and take comfort by the fire. The wind is fierce and cold this day. Did you see him this time, Dr. Foreman? He did it again. He ran off the moment he saw me. See who, madam? Your patient, Signor Ferraro. Ah, verily? Indeed, I was expecting him to come for a consultation this day. But he changed his mind and ran off, you say. Huh. How very mysterious. Truly, tis as if all men are determined to use me ill. Surely not all men, madam. I, for one, remain most devotedly at your service. My dear lady, I do not need to read the stars to see that something grave has befallen you. Pray, tell me what it is. Yesterday What's I up, did lady? meet with Mr Shakespeare to discourse upon our new play, which is to open this week at the theatre in Shoreditch. But though I was determined not to confront him about the sonnets he wrote about me, "'Twas difficult to hide the heaviness I did feel in his company. Aww. "'I can well imagine, madam.' "'So then, well, he remarked upon my dark humour, "'to wit he said to me, "'Emilia, your pretty brow does furrow, "'so I will kiss it smooth.' "'And I sense that you did not receive this well?' "'Indeed I did not. "'Forsooth I was so enraged by this, I... I reversed my flagon of ale full over his head. Ah. Whereon he rose from his stool, declaring I was the most ungrateful and unworthy wench in all of Christendom, and then he flew out of the tavern like... like a bat from out the gates of hell. A most vivid image, and no doubt most apt. Men who work in playhouses are prone to indulging in such melodrama, of course. Why so many ladies care for such men in preference of those employed in solid, stable professions, I shall never understand. And if only that were all. For this morning I saw a bill advertising our play posted on a wall in my street. It bears his name and not mine. Ah, oh, really? shit. There it Surely is. Surely not. Mayhap there has been some error made. Nay. Dr. Foreman, tis no error, for I rushed to the theatre to see what was amiss, but I was refused admittance. Indeed, the player who came to the door denied all knowledge of my collaboration on the play. Methinks Mr. Shakespeare is exacting his petty vengeance upon me for rejecting his sly suit by denying me credit for my work. And he means to deal with me by pretending I do not exist, as if I were a ghost. Or is it he who has become the ghost? In truth, I am not yet sure how that metaphor should work. Mm -hmm. What monstrous perfidy! Pray tell me what I might do to punish this wretched scribbler. Though I am not adept with a sword, I do have a book that instructs in how to command nefarious spirits. Oh, prithee, sir, I am come not in search of vengeance, but to seek answers. As you know, I have been ill-treated by my husband, and now I am betrayed by Mr Shakespeare. Pray... Read the stars and answer me this, Dr. Foreman. Will I ever be able to trust, even love, a man again? Damn. There's only one answer? <sighs> Amelia secretly wishes to commit adultery with a man of high intelligence. Suggests adultery. Amelia's friends have been unworthy of her confidence, son falling in Libra. Amelia should give in to her true feelings, suggest emotions. God rewards men who invest time in their friendships with comely women. Uh, uh, okay. The relationship betwixt Amelia and me is currently wrought by confusion. No, 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 leave us out of it. 
Emilia's literary legacy has been betrayed by Mr. Shakespeare. Mistress Lanier is ignorant of the love she inspires, but her ignorance will be reversed. Emilia's present adversity may bring change and new life in the form of a child. Uranus in retrograde indicates a sudden change brought about by a reversal. Pluto in retrograde is life, not death. Apparently we have no other options. This is the stars all say... She fixed everything with a child, I know, right? This was the olden times, I mean, what else is she gonna do? To your question of whether there yet be a man in this world worthy mm -hmm. of your trust and affections, forsooth, I have never seen an arrangement of stars that speaks so clearly. Verily, then pray tell what answer does it give? My dear lady, the answer you seek need not be divined by reading the stars. It may be read in the signs you see before you now. <clears throat> to wit, the answer you seek is right in front of no. you. No! I'm afraid I do not follow, Dr. Foreman. Tis your feather quill, a half-eaten apple, your desk is a little untidy, and I must confess the symbolism in Flemish still-life painting has always quite confounded me. Take a skull, for instance. What sense does a skull make alongside a bowl? Below? Tis clear to me now, your face was always hid in shadow, but tis you, Mr. Foreman. You are the man who has been prowling me what? these last months. Dearest, loveliest Amelia. No! Allow me to profess to Simon, you my stop undying it. admiration for your charms, which are not insignificant. God's womb, et tu, Dr. Foreman. Fire you of all men to betray me thus. <laughs> but tis true. I now see the answer. For I know now never again to trust a man to guide me. Henceforth, I shall write under my own name. And when there are decisions to be made, I shall take my own counsel and make my own judgments. Yeah. By the by, methinks I do at last understand that prediction you made for me some years ago, Dr. Foreman. The one about how belief is required if I am to succeed. Tis a belief I must hold not in the inevitability of my own personal success, but of the successes of the women who will come after me. Aww. Farewell, Dr. Foreman. And clean your desk. Verily, it is quite disgusting. You are gross and you've been stalking me, but hey, I still got something of value out of you, so there. The querent did wish to know whether she will be she will ever trust or love a man again. I did advise the querent that I was a man she, whom she could love and trust. She took my advice ill, but we already got the letter. We women will achieve equal treatment even if it takes us a hundred years. Sir, I must beseech you not to encourage my husband Nicholas in his fanciful notions. I bid you consider the trouble you are causing our family by emboldening his delusions. Your current's long-suffering wife, Sarah Mug. Listen, I'm trying. He runs off every time I try to tell him he's hypochondriac. Lancelot New guy. is on a great house. Oh. Much does depend, much on his choice for the stars. He must be he well, must be he well, well, but he must consecrate it well. No matter the cost to love and to hell. I ain't saying you're a gold digger. Good day to you, young sir, Except and for that well you're met. really a gold digger. You are Lancelot Moore of Middlesex, are you not? What an honour it is to welcome a son of the great house of Moore to my humble consulting chambers. Tis indeed I, Lancelot Moore. I will own it. But hear this. My family is ignorant of my designs in coming here, and I wish them to remain so. Which is why I come to you, Mr. Foreman. For methinks you are not such a man who would ever find himself in the company of a family such as ours. Ah, well, you may count upon my discretion, Mr. Moore. And what is the matter that brings you this day? It is that my family wish me to marry my wretched cousin Barbara. And I take it you would not wish to comply? Nay, I verily would not. Cousin Barbara is a vile little minx. She loves nothing more than to sport with me and play cruel japes. Last Christmas, 
She even hid a dead mouse in my mince pie. Oh, she's flying. The lady does seem most spirited. The lady? Spirited. <laughs> oh, pish. Cousin Barbara is hardly a lady, for she is not 14 years of age. It is most unnatural to ask a grown man to wed a child. Yeah. Indeed it is. Tis my belief that in these enlightened times we should consider... Verily, Barbara be damned. My heart belongs to a true woman, not a freckled, scrawny slip of a girl. A full-blossomed woman. A woman, you say? I, Marion. My other cousin. I see. Ah, oh, Marion. So beguiling are her shapely charms. Oh, to lie, if not to die, in Marion's arms. So soft her lips, so sweet her face. Oh, how I yearn for her embrace. In me she hath such passion stirred. A he just on. keeps going and we pass out. Hell yeah. Polly Poo, hello and welcome. I pray for death and I would be martyred if from her I be thus parted. And so you see, you must help me forestall this wretched marriage so that I might wed my sweet cousin Marion. Mr. Foreman? Mr. Foreman? Uh, 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 yes, indeed. Uh, let us see what the stars advise. How might Mr. Moore avoid this marriage to his cousin Barbara? Good question. Alright. If Moore spreads a rumor about Barbara being sexually active- She's a child! The marriage plans will be abruptly cancelled. Uranus in retrograde represents surprising reveal. Pluto in retrograde suggests a backlash provoked by sexual intercourse. Or, what was it called again? Scumpty Humpty or something? Just being silly. Hello, Lecta. Okay, hi! How are you doing today? This house suggests Barbara is with child. She is a child! A child child! She's not even 14! False piety. No, that's fucked up. Alright. Appeal to Moore's vanity. An appeal to Moore's vanity may induce him to travel abroad. House of foreign countries suggests more is vain. More will be able to extract himself from this engagement once he has come of age and has control over his fortune. House of wills and inheritance. This represents the passing of time and aging. Grandma called to check on me, so I missed the last two and a half hours. Aw, you were talking to that your grandma that whole time? That's cute. My grandma called me last week. She was like, I'm worried about you. Moore should betray his family by serving his country. He should go to war. Treachery through war. No. What's this one? Barbara is secretly unhappy about the marriage. Moon in detriment. In Capricorn, this represents an unhappy woman, most likely Barbara. God's aid will come via cousin Barbara, who is both intelligent and rebellious. Venus in detriment in Scorpio suggests a rebellious female. Barbara. Mercury represents intelligence. Uh, wh what does Moore's intuition tell him about this marriage? Therein lies the key to unraveling his engagement. Intuition. Hey, you'll figure it out your own damn self. Or go to, go to war and whatnot. Or lie about child Barbara. Let's go with this one. You'll figure it out. I, you're smart, you know. Don't know what happened to the woman with the religious issue and her love for Venetian glasswork. Oh, that's a, that's a whole thing. So Avis Allen gave us our letter of recommendation. Uh, we told her to go to church but cross her fingers behind her back. Then she came in wanting to know if her lover, us, was seeing anybody else and... Uh, we were like, no, we're not, and then we banged some more. And she came on behalf of her husband, whose privy member was, was not functioning properly. And we said, he has a cold heart, he needs boiled snake, but also bang me instead. Um, 
She was being prowled, wanted to know the identity of her prowler. It was me. And she came and said that she was with child and I accused her of sleeping with my assistant. We have not seen her since. It is apparent you do not wish to marry your cousin Barbara. But have you considered whether she wishes to marry you? Nay, but I cannot think why she would not want to marry me. I am exceeding eligible. I doubtless you are, Mr. Moore. Uh, but do you not think her unkind japes may indicate she harbors some, well, some degree of malice towards you? Hmm. Mayhap you are right. I did find a toad in my bed Thursday last. Tis as if Barbara were possessed by a demon. Very possibly. Uh, and thus possessed, she may be distracted and not wholly aware of your, uh, fine qualities. I advise you to simply bide your time. For the stars suggest she is a cunning maid who plans to thwart the marriage using a method of her own devising. Verily. Then I will leave it all to Barbara, as you advise. But it shall be on your head if I'm forced to marry her, Mr. Foreman. <laughs> hope this goes well. The querent did wish to know how to avoid marrying his c cousin Barbara. I did tell the querent to bide his time, as doubtless his young cousin would find a way to put an end to the match herself. Methinks the querent was a little pleased. Only a little pleased. Mayhap I go this night to recite rhyming verse outside Marion's bedchamber. I saw that in a play. It works wondrous well. Spanish Armada nears English coast. Nation prepares for invasion whilst Queen searches for missing navy. Oh no. Yay. As Spanish ships near our shores, the Queen's ground troops prepare for what promises to be a blood-soaked slaughter of Englishmen by continental Catholic savages. With England's coasts undefended, experts predict Spanish ships will be sailing up the Thames to London within days. Sources in the royal court say the queen is more than a little vexed by the absence of the royal navy, navy which experts describe as lost. Oopsie daisies, oh, we lost our navy. When she saw to marry, lest he be brand yellow, which if Mary sees you keeping cats against you, she will snitch. Beware of Mistress Mary, which she is a nosy. She's a nosy butt. Blessed even, Dr. No Foreman. Nosy anus. Mistress Payne, what brings you in such weather? It is most dangerous to be about in it. Oh, it takes more than a little wind and rain to forestall me from doing the Lord's work. Besides, foul weather is naught but God's righteous vengeance upon London for the sinful debauchery of its inhabitants. Verily? Then I dread to think what northerners get up to of an evening. Pray heed me carefully, Dr. Foreman, for tis on a most pressing matter that I am come. Doubtless you have heard the news. The Spanish Armada does sail once again towards England's shores. It seems this latest armada was most unexpected. Well, as tis off said, no one expects the Spanish armada. Tis very grave this time, for I have heard tell that our own warships are far away at sea, and with our coasts undefended, a Catholic horde may soon be sailing up the Thames to slay us all. Aye, our situation is most grave indeed. But what would you have me tell you, Mistress Payne? I wish to know whether the English fleet will arrive home in time to defend our shores. Or might we ordinary folk be compelled to take up arms to defend ourselves? Dr. Foreman, are you ready to beat off the Catholics, come what may? Am I ready to beat off the... Uh, prithee, madam, let us pray the need never arises. Uh, perchance the stars will offer us some reassurance. Will the Royal Naval Fleet return home in time to defend England from the Spanish Armada? I need to see what the date is, because they're in Havana. Havana, ooh la la. Half of my heart is in Havana, ooh la la. So yeah, they, they were supposed to intercept them in Havana on the 15th. 
I don't think they're gonna be there in time. The Spanish Cinque Armada. Sorry. Aha, there was a little fiber on my eyelashes. Get out of there, man. This could have some consequences, maybe a few. The Spanish Armada is coming. Will the Royal Navy return to defend? The Royal Navy is absent due to a reckless and misguided pursuit of gold. I mean, that's true. Jupiter in detriment and retrograde represents misguided, careless actions. We also know this for a fact. Ambitions will be thwarted by confusion. Hit House of Hidden Valuables and Neptune. Mercury is creativity. Venus in detriment in Scorpio suggests unpleasantness. Unpleasantness will result from a cunning plan to steal goods. House of Lost and Stolen Goods. Well, that's true. What's this? House of Neighbors. Mars falling in Cancer counsels violence. Mistress Payne must rouse her neighbors to take up arms. Authorities cannot be trusted to uphold their duty to defend ordinary Englanders. Sun falling in Libra suggests untrustworthy authority. Or... Chaotic evil... Or, sorry. <laughs> Can you tell I'm a, I'm a little bit I'm a little bit D and D. Catholic evil angels will have their plans thwarted by a deadly, unpredictable event. Uranus in retrograde represents reversal. Pluto in retrograde represents a reversal caused by death. Spanish feet will be delayed due to idleness of their sailors. I don't remember my history well enough. Uh... But I know that A is correct. I just don't know if, uh, if C is correct. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go with A. I don't think she's gonna like it. We need more letters. We've almost got a letter from Sybil. We almost have a letter from Robert. Ricardo we lost favor with, even though, like, I, I want to uncover him. Does being correct actually matter? I don't know. Depends. And Mary Payne does not like me very much, though. Madam, know you of Robert Devereux, the Earl of Essex, or of Sir Walter Raleigh, perchance? Oh, young Lord Devereux, such a talented young man. My niece is especially taken with him. Well, it would seem the pair did take the royal fleet on an expedition to intercept and seize gold being transported back to Spain from the New World. But their plan went awry, and now they are lost at sea. I am afeard that... Short of a miracle, a Spanish invasion is indeed imminent. Her Majesty would risk her realm and the lives of her subjects for the sake of guild. Then now present danger does not surprise me. England's downfall will be God's punishment for our Queen's greed and avarice. Well, to be fair to Her Majesty, I do not imagine she gave Devereux and Raleigh permission to... Oh, my days! With a Spanish invasion nigh, I know not how to calm my anxious passions. Methinks I shall take to bed with Paul and Matthew this even. Uh, oh, yes, I see. The book of Paul and the book of Matthew. I mm. verily. Uh, Holy Scripture does give great Sex comfort jokes. to a distressed mind. Uh, God keep you well, Mistress Payne. At least she liked that. The querent did wish to know whether the Royal Navy would return home in time to defend England from the Spanish Armada. I did advise the querent that the Royal Fleet would not be back in time to defend our coast from the Spanish Armada. She was a little pleased. Did you influence them into intercepting? No, they were going to go regardless. Um, but I got to cho I told them when and where. I didn't want to, but they pressured me. My niece will be beside herself with worry. Mayhap I take her on a diverting outing to see the hangings at Tyburn. Oh, good. Yes! 
Sir, I must congratulate you on the sterling counsel you gave me in relation to my horrid cousin Barbara, whom my parents did wish me to marry. As you predict, the wretched little fiend did at length contrive a method for ending our engagement. She has run off with the Earl of Shrewsbury, your most relieved querent, Lancelot Moore Esquire. <laughs> Sex jokes in a lecta stream in a game that heavily references Shakespeare. I know, right? I love penis vagina. Weird. Peas. Good morrow, Mr. Mug. Back again so soon. He's a hypochondriac. And yet your red spots do seem to have faded. Aye, those spots were naught but the work of fleas. My wife did beat the rugs and banish the dogs from the house. She'll be beating and banishing me next if she has her way. Well, I am glad to hear you are faring better. Uh, what brings you this day? I have a humoral imbalance and need treating for it. A humoral imbalance, you say? Well, tis true that an imbalance of humours can affect a man's mood. For instance, an excess of black bile, which is a cold, dry humour, can provoke feelings of melancholy, whereas yellow bile is... is hot and dry. I thank ye for the explanation, Dr. Foreman, but I did learn all about humours when I took supper with my friend, Mistress Ollingworth. She has a humoral imbalance and takes medicine for it. Hence, I am come this day for medicine to treat my own <laughs> oh, imbalance. I see. And what mental symptoms are you experiencing? Any unusual or troubling feelings? I very troubling. Why, I find myself a fretting and a pacing all the day long. Even my wife has remarked upon it. Anxiety and agitation. Uh, pray tell, did these feelings begin before or after you spoke with your friend, Mistress Ollingworth? Hmm, let me see now. Uh, after, methinks. Aye, after. Why, does that matter? Yes, quite possibly. Uh, but let us see what these stars do have to say. What humoral imbalance does ail my querent Nicholas Mug? Hypochondria. Mug is mightly choleric. A humoral imbalance of color can occasion symptoms of anger, impatience, and irritability. Constipation. Mug is suffering from constipation and a related psychological condition. Mercury. Indicates a psychological factor. Venus, detriment in Scorpio, suggests a mild, mild imbalance of phlegm. Uh, the psychological factor. Listen. You're a, hyp you're a fucking hypochondriac, man. Have you a diagnosis yet? This day I am to dine with Mistress Ollingworth, and I wish to tell her all about it. Aye, it is done. Uh, you have an imbalance of phlegm in your bowels. Not only does this cause constipation, it does also provoke a condition of the mind called retention of the anus. What? Uh, with retention of the anus, the sufferer is prone to fixation and obsession. Is there, perchance, a particular subject upon which you think you may fixate or obsess? Uh, pretty, sir, take your time to think. Hmm. Nay. Nay, I cannot say as I do fixate or obsess over anything. Methinks your diagnosis must be wrong. Oh, well, it was worth a try. Aye, well, doubtless you will have better luck with the stars next time, eh? Good day, Dr. Foreman. I'm determined. I'm determined to get him to know that he's a hypochondriac. If he doesn't believe us on the fifth go, and then give us a, a letter of recommendation, I will, I will eat my hat. The querent did present with symptoms of a troubled mind. I did diagnose constipation and retention of the anus. I was not able to prescribe a treatment as I failed to convince the querent of this diagnosis. And he hates me. I do not think I would like to tell Mr. Stallingworth about an imbalance of my bowels, not over dinner, forsooth. Hear ye, hear ye! Spanish Armada sunk by English storm! Hear ye! 
Proving once again that God loves England more than our Catholic enemies, the Spanish naval fleet has been defeated by a mighty storm that has been raging in the English Channel for nigh on three days. What remains of the Armada has fled back to Spain. Beachcombers are advised to wait for the storm to abate before looting corpses that have washed ashore. Here comes a son of noble birth. Know you how much his father is worth? For such a boy, advantage is good, entitled to much deserving of not. Well, all of it was about the Spanish Armada. There are, so all of our responses are about the questions that are posed to us. None, none of it is random. But the way in which we respond depends on whether we pick, like, which option we pick determines how we respond um, and what advice we give. So all of it was about the Spanish Armada because that's what, the, uh, what Mary asked about. She said, will the royal fleet get home in time? And I said, no, barring a miracle, there, it's not going to come home in time. Random event that would prevent their invasion. Right. Right, but I couldn't remember what happened to the Spanish Armada because I don't remember my history well enough. So I picked the one that still gave her the information that she wanted, but gave me the wiggle room to not, like... Have a hard... Oh, Sarah. Hard yes or whatever. I, I have dire need of your counsel. Pray calm yourself, sir, and tell me of this urgent affair. Oh, verily. It is most urgent. A fair maiden has my heart. A maid with hair of shining gold and eyes so blue the finest sapphires grow pale with envy. But she is the most pious and demure in nature and has many other suitors. How might I win her favor? Golden hair? Uh, but in our last consultation... Uh, let me see here in my notes. Ah, yes. Uh, you told me your heart belonged to... A maid with hair of onyx black that doth make the finest ebony go gray with envy. You mean my cousin Marion? <laughs> Pish! That was naught but a childish fancy. I bid you, foreman, pray focus on the matter at hand. For if you do not help me win my true love's favor... My bursting heart will tear asunder. My soul will wither unto... Aye, aye, as you will. Let us see what guidance can be had from the stars. How may Lancelot Moore win the heart of this golden-haired maiden? I love this guy. He's such a dingle derp. All right, how's he gonna do it? A sudden religious conversion is strongly advised. This suggests an unpredictable event. Ju -ju -ju. Pluto in retrograde tells of transformation wherein something is reversed. He did say she was pious. Moore's hopes will be realized, but he must be self-disciplined and patient. House of Hopes. Saturn exalted in Libra advises patience and self-discipline. Okay, so that's that. Or B, the maid's secret nature is hidden beneath a veil of false religious fervor. The moon represents a woman, the maiden. Jupiter in detriment in Gemini indicates false piety. It would appear that Moore has a brutish nature, indicates violence and aggression. Moore may win the lady's hand in marriage with jewelry and fine things. Venus, this planet suggests jewelry and fine things. Or C. Moore should lie about the size of his fortune, a trifling task for such an oversauced peacockle. Maid's father has a deceitful business partner. The son, this represents a, man, a mature man, the maiden's father. Mercury in detriment and, and retrograde suggests a liar who has turned a turncoat. So lie about your money. Also, her family is is kaput but also at the, at the beginning it said that he needs a uh, he needs to marry someone wealthy hmm 
Should I tell him to go religious? <laughs> Let's take a look at him. Lancelot. Hmm. We're going to see him five more times. I just need to not fuck this up too bad. So I think... Huh. Why about it? Whatever. Let's go. Just do it. It would seem the fiercest rival for the maiden's favor is one of our father's business partners. He is a deceitful knave who tells the father lies. You must best him by telling even greater lies. Yeah, good plan. Tell her father you are much wealthier than you verily are, and he will surely favor your advances. A father's Business partner, you say? But is he not? Oh, God's teeth! The man is her uncle! If he seeks to wed his niece, I do not think it right. Fie! T'would be very wrong. I will go to her father and tell him it is better he favor me than bestow his daughter's hand on his own brother. I bid you good day, foreman, for it is most urgent that I deliver the poor girl from such an a natural fate. Oh no. I don't think that's gonna go so well. Ah, I did warn the querent that his beloved is presently being wooed by her father's business partner. The querent must exaggerate his wealth to prove himself a more convincing match. He was pleased. Why is everything with this guy so incesty? Well, marrying your cousins was not... Uh... It, it wasn't a big deal back then. It was commonplace. An uncle who wishes to wed his niece. Who does the scoundrel think he is? King Richard the Third. Oh. And it's like she likes a drink. She does care not what you think. Her head may end up down the sink. But Alice cares not what you think. She also has cheeks of rosy pink. Good day, Mistress Black. What brings you? Oh, Dr. Foreman, I have worked myself into such a state that I have urgent need of you. Oh, uh, you have, have you? Uh, well then, let me just, uh... Yea, I have urgent need of your counsel. I am certain that my husband, Blarg, is hiding a shameful secret from me. As you doubtless did note from my flushedness of face and heaving of bosom, I burn with the fever of suspicion and curiosity. And Indeed, I drunkness. did remark a fever upon your person, and wish fervently that I may bring it to a speedy resolution. Let us see. What is this secret that your husband, Thomas Blagg, hides from you? How are you doing, Anomnia? Heaving of bosom, yes. <gasps> heaving. <gasps> Bosom! Indeed. <laughs> Which would you rather? Many heavings of bosom or many heaving or much heaving of bosoms? It appears that Alice is to inherit is it appears that Alice is to inherit wealth one day. House of Wills and Inheritance. The moon represents a woman. Alice's husband serves his wife and family well through his frugal management of their affairs. That's just false. Much heaving of bosom. Bosoms multiple. Which will, which is it? Which one is it? All of the, all the bosoms. Okay, gotcha. The secret relates to a sudden transformation in fortune. Sure, this refers to the Spanish treasure expedition Alice's husband invested in. But would it be right to reveal that, reveal what I know to Alice? Do care. This suggests a sudden change in fortune. Pluto indicates transformation. I see intelligence, authority, yea, verily. Alice is impressed by my authority and intelligence. 
Alice's husband has been carelessly optimistic with the family's finances. Mars in retrograde, this represents a misguided man. Jupiter in detriment in retrograde indicates carelessness and misdirected optimism. Alice's husband, uh, his business instincts are misdirected. Neptune in retrograde represents a reversal caused by confusion. So all of this is true. I don't see that we need to tell her exactly what he did, but just say, yeah, he's mismanaging all your shit. A religious romance. Now we're going to go with the truth. I know from the stars that your husband's an idiot. I fear the secret your husband hides is a sudden transformation from wealth to pauperdom. For he has been careless with your family's finances by making a series of bad business investments. <gasps> Lorks and mercy! That boil-brained chump has ruined us! Upon my virtue, I can hardly bear to think on it. Nay, nay, I cannot even... I cannot Say, even... Say, is that medicinal wine I spy on the shelf behind you, good sir? Prithee, pour your patient a dose of it. Simon makes a fine figure when he reads the stars wisely. Uh -oh. Mayhap I stay a while and take wine and a little else with him. Uh-oh. Don't do it, because we know Avis is going to come back and be like, My child is a redhead! Don't do it. The querent did wish to know the secret she thinks her husband, Thomas Blog, is hiding. I did reveal that the querent's husband has mismanaged the family fortune. Methinks the querent was a little pleased with me for the reading I gave this day. No! Bad Simon. Coitus post consolatio. They're all hot for the star reader. Yeah, man. He did it. Of all the vices, why must my husband choose greed? A drunken fornicator gives a wife far less trouble than a gambler. Alas, for little Alice, such sorrow what she has she born, since she was made a lass, she has much, she has much to mourn. This game is fucking amazing. I love this so much. Coitus post fellatio. Well, he just, he doesn't write about the particular acts, just that something happened. Half the budget must have gone into these songs. They're so good. They're so good. I love this game so much. It's... It's silly, it's funny, they've got great uh, references, like modern references, um, but they still keep with the, the like Shakespearean theme. It's just so good. I love good this day, so Mistress much. Good day, Mistress Delamere. Good day, Dr. I know, Foreman. she married two old Tis guys. Lady Dyer now. I remarried after poor Mr. Delamere passed. Verily? Oh, I am full sorry to hear of your husband's demise, my lady. It was the work of a witch, I just told as you, you predicted, Dr. Foreman. Oh, I called On it! On the morning he died, I saw our cook, Mavis, mixing some manner of potion in a cauldron, while uttering some evil incantation in a foreign tongue. I sent her packing back to Wales, but alas, it was too late for my poor Mr. Delamere. He collapsed and died that even. Ah, and you are sure your cook was not merely singing a Welsh folk song while stirring a pot of soup? But yes, she was very probably incanting a spell, as you say. Oh, what a ghastly business. You must have been most distressed. Yes, I was. So I hope you will understand why I worry for the health of my new husband, Lord Dyer. Mayhap tis not at all, and yet... And yet you would wish to know so that you may rest easier. Why, of course, my lady. Uh, pray, describe Lord Dyer's troubles to me, no matter how trifling they may seem to you. Well, I have noted that my husband awakens many times in the night to make water. Mayhap tis the reason why he tires so easily during the day. 
and he does oft complain of thirst and hunger, Diabetes. even after meals. Uh, frequent urination, tiredness, dog-like appetite and thirst. Uh, be there anything else? There is also a small wound on his hand. It does not appear grave, yet it has not healed, even though it be some weeks since he cut himself. A wound that will not heal. Hmm. Then let us see what these stars have to say. Be there any grave illness troubling Mr. John Delamere? Methinks you mean Lord Henry Dyer, Dr. Foreman. I beseech your pardon, my lady. What illness troubles Lord Henry Dyer? I'm surprised we didn't get extra plus marks because we got her last husband's diagnosis right. 2020 Lady Lecta Game of the Year? I mean, for games released in 2020? Probably. I mean, it's early yet. This game is just, it's, it's a perfect game for me. I, it's, it's creative and very clever and funny and engaging and, uh, and unique. There's nothing else like it. I probably won't get to play Cyberpunk for a long time. A wound that will not heal, perchance might it be crawling in your skin. <laughs> oh, bear. But why now? What do you mean? All right, the diabeat. <laughs> This game is so good! And thank you, Scrubs, because I would have not called Diabetes if I didn't watch a shit ton of Scrubs. Libra, ruler of kidneys. Saturn exalted in Libra. This suggests a severe imbalance of black bile in the body. Hi, Casper! Who let this goddess out of my screen? Oh, you stop it. You stop. How are you doing? Lord Dyer has been bewitched. Ares, ruler of the head. Uranus suggest witch suggests witchcraft. Pluto is possibility of death. Or Gemini. Lord Dyer has a gangrene in the hand, characterized by an inflammation caused by corrupt blood. Mars in retrograde. This suggests a deficiency in yellow bile. Jupiter in detriment in retrograde suggests mild imbalance of blood. So, I don't think it's gangrene. I think it's diabetes. I don't remember if cuts not healing is a... Is a symptom of diabetes but being tired all the time and frequent peeing and i think being thirsty and hungry i think that's all diabetes good just exhausted but it's finally a slow day today just got to edit a podcast and listen to my dumb voice for three hours oh no that sounds terrible listening to your voice for three hours i'm kidding don't start don't start. I'm sorry that you've got more work to do. You deserve quite a break. Surprised I heard nothing about leeches as of yet. We heard about leeches once. We bled... Um... Amelia. I forget why exactly, but we bled her for some reason. It's comments that, like that to make me the way I am. I'm teasing you! I'm very much teasing you. It's rainy. It's rainy out today. Yeah, so he got the diabeat. <laughs> he got the beatus. It seemed Lord Dyer suffers from the diabeat. Tis a grave case of it, I am afeard. God mend me. Then how am I to keep my husband from dying of it? Well, the consumption of lettuce seeds and barley water can help, and you must not allow him to take honey or sweetmeats. In truth, I am a little concerned about the wound on his lordship's hand, though it be minor. It is the diabetes that prevents it from healing. Oh, then what should be done about it? Take Lord Dyer to a barber surgeon, where he may have leeches applied to his wound. This will draw out the corrupt blood to hasten the healing. But prithee, be sure that your husband never cuts himself again. For the corruption of blood such cuts occasion in a sufferer of the diabetes, well, they oftentimes prove fatal. Oh, then I shall do precisely as you advise, Dr. Foreman. I thank ye heartily, sir. Good day. Thanks, babe. We bled her for her depression. Uh, maybe. That might have been it. I'll, I'll check. No cordis this time. No, no. 
She's she's not uh, not the type that would engage in such things. But yeah, the, also the other thing that I really like. So I love Shakespeare, but I also love medicine and stuff. Like it's just this game is so very much made for me. Ah, oh, it's so good. It's so good, but I'm like, I'm using my knowledge to help me make decisions in the game. And history. My knowledge of history, which is not very good. My knowledge of medicine, which is, you know, vague, but better than, than my knowledge of history. And it feels good. It feels good to use my actual mind brain. My actual gray matter. Uh, the querent did wish to know whether her husband, Lord Henry Dyer, was troubled by a condition that could provoke his death. I did judge Lord Dyer as having the Dyer beat. I advised her to change his diet and ensure he does not cut himself again. Methinks the Quirant was pleased with me for the reading I gave this day. Oh, yeah. Honey, sweetmeats, cuts. I swear, if I got all three of her husband's conditions correctly, I'm getting that letter. Is it is? That's what Here I thought. Come, How are you doing? Avis! She better not look in my book and see the core the the coitus. How are you doing? Hey, Mistress Allen. I hear a child was lately born to you. I trust he is well. Yes, indeed. God has favoured us with a healthy boy. He is a true blessing to Mr. Allen and me. <coughs> and we pray he remains so. That is, that this child remains in good health. And as I do ail of something, normally I would not have come, but methinks tis best I am treated uh, for the sake of Marmaduke, lest he take ill from me. <coughs> she got consumption. See. Then pray describe your troubles to me, Ave, Mistress Allen. Well, in truth, it is but a cough, but indeed at first I thought was naught but a chilly cold, but it is many weeks now, and it lingers still. <coughs> Forsooth, I am afeard it does grow worse. Many weeks, you say? Aye, that is most concerning. Let us see what the stars have to say. What ails Mistress Avis Allen, and how may she be cured? Don't mention the other woman. Well, we'll see. Gemini. Ruler of the lungs, Mars in retrograde suggests a mild imbalance of yellow bile. Jupiter in detriment in retrograde suggests mild deficiency of blood in the body. She has a grave case of mattering in the breast. Or she's been, been, be, been bewitched and is in mortal danger. Uranus suggests witchcraft. Pluto suggests possibility of death. Uh... I don't, I don't think she's bewitched. I think she probably has some, some shit in the lungs. Yeah, I think, I think she's got consumption. That's what I was going to say. Cholera? Yeah, probably. Something, something gross and 16th century. Before I complete my judgment, madam, I must ask a question of, uh, medical relevance. <laughs> that face. <sighs> Who is the relevance. true father of your... God, mend me, Simon. You would plague me with your suspicious fancies even now, in my very hour of need. Have you no thought for my son and my... <coughs> <clears throat> I am full sick of your jealous delusions. Oh, verily, I should never have come. I will bid ye good day now, Simon. But would you not wish to know what ails you? I indeed, I would. Which is why I will be finding myself another doctor. You're an idiot. I was too distracted to judge the querent's illness. <laughs> Good job! The person you love is gonna die because you're negligent. I'll find myself a true physician. A doctor who has a medical license. Yeah, I think that's a good plan. 
When the story seems full, this guy. When the story seems full, crucial facts left I know, right? <laughs> And this guy is pretending to be Italian, and he came to us with symptoms of pregnancy, and we told him, Bruh, you're Pregnanant. And he was like, But I am a man! Wait, that was more French than fake Italian. But uh, I am a man, uh, he said. And we were like, Yeah, but that's what your symptoms say. Good taste in your Ferraro. How may I do you service? How may you do me service, huh? This is a question, is it not? I do hear you offer many different Look, his services. Look, mustache is falling not just off. just medicine. For you are a dottore of a special kind. One who gives answers to all the problems, see? Forsooth, tis true, signor. In my practice, I endeavor to treat the whole man. Mind, body, soul. The location of his missing household items. All are connected at a holistic level. I take it this time you are come about a problem that does not pertain to a bodily complaint? See, si, these are my mama. She does a worry night and day. She say, Ricardo, you must go to the wise man who reads the stars and have him tell you what your future holds. I say, Mama, if it'll make you happy, I will go to Signor Forman and ask him. I see. And is there any particular reason for your mother to be thus concerned? Be you faced with some kind of imminent danger? A particular reason, you say? Nay, nee, signor, she needs no reason to worry. Mia madre is an Italian, mama. Ah, yes, of course. You see now, ah? Huh? She is not like these London mamas who make the children live in a cupboard with the dog. <laughs> well, then mayhap the stars might offer your devoted mother some comfort. What does the future hold for Ricardo Ferraro and his mother? This is ridiculous. And yeah, Casper, that, that made me laugh. It's cute, dorky, smart, Shakespeare-y, and we both know how much you get off to the spear. Shush. <laughs> hey, you two, how are you doing? I showed everyone at the beginning of stream. You think I like Shakespeare maybe a little bit? You know, usually people have pictures of like their partner on their phone. I usually have either other people's cats or <laughs> <laughs> or a picture that I took from London, such as Shakespeare. You screamed, look, you screamed basically bloody murder when I told you I made it Shakespearean Lytton College. Shush! Security and I will be. They didn't have to do anything. It was clearly excitement. All right, let's see. A. Ferraro... Ricardo Ferraro is not being honest, and soon his deceptions may be discovered. Yes! Neptune in retrograde. You're fake Italian, who sometimes sounds like the French guys from the Holy Grail. My relationship with Signor Ricardo is about to undergo a sudden transformation. Uranus indicates a sudden change. I'm never going to say Uranus again. It's always Uranus. It's so funny. Pluto indicates transformation. Ricardo Ferraro is an authority figure who holds a position of responsibility at a learned institution. Mercury represents education. The sun represents an authority figure. <gasps> yes. And what's this one? A young man who is in a relationship with Signor Ferraro's mother is a hypocrite who will betray her. This shows a young man who turns against his benefactor. I don't know why I would pick this. It's kind of funny, though. Ferraro will one day inherit an agreeable sum from his mother... Venus exalted in Pisces suggests pleasantness. The moon represents mother, or just a woman. Uh, Ferraro family is frugo. frugal. This includes Signora Ferraro, who has carefully managed her personal fortune. Saturn exalted in Libra represents frugality. But Uranus. But Uranus. My anus is bleeding! Someone came in saying that their anus was bleeding. Not in those words, but I, I had a field day with that. My anus is bleeding! I am afraid these stars reveal information of a most disturbing nature. Uh, verily? Aye. When you first came to me, you did tell me that you worked in trade. And yet my chart very plainly indicates that you are an authority figure. 
connected with a learned institution over which you hold a position of responsibility. Indeed, it would seem that you are not who you say you are. Do you deny it, Signor? Thwarted. Oh, Sirrah! You would accuse me of calling myself something I am not? He's suddenly <laughs> British. Look at you, Sirrah. A charlatan who would call himself a doctor. You are naught but a pretender. Fie, sir. It is you who are the pretender. For it is clear you are not the merchant of Venice you pretend to be. Who are you? What is your true name, sir? You will know it in time, Sirrah, for we shall meet again. I bid you good day, Dr. Foreman. <laughs> this guy is nuts. He's an official doctor testing you. I mean, that's what I thought. Um, but he's being real weird about it. The Querent did wish to know what the future holds for him and his mother. I did accuse the Querent of being no merchant, but a man who holds a position of authority over a learned institution. Methinks the Querent took my advice most ill. Well, he's not going to give us a letter of recommendation, but he should, because we've diagnosed him correctly every single time. I now have all the informa information I need for my report. Mail. Sir, it is with much sorrow that I write to inform you of the health of my dear wife Avis these past two days. Her new doctor could not save her. No! Even though he held a medical license and was thus highly skilled. Although you were no longer my, doc my wife's doctor, I am grateful for the kindness you have shown Avis over the years, and I know she was too. Indeed, she spoke of you in her final words, saying, Oh, Simon, forgive me, Simon, or something of the like. Doubtless, this expression of guilt was in reference to a bill for your services that she had not yet settled. How like my poor wife to have been thinking of her obligations to others until her very last breath. I enclose with this missive a sum of one shilling and beg your forgiveness for late payment. Your most assured friend, William Allen. <sighs> Fuck. Yeah, if we were just nicer to her, we should have listened to the stars. We should have listened to the damn store, damn store stars. Uranus. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about that, Wormy. Hey, auto save, how you doing? I'm doing fabulous. This game is amazing. Little did you, little did ye know, I smashed that hard. Yes, and verily, the one you call son is not the fruit from your... Man, it is raining so hard right now. It is not the fruit from your... Inactive loins. There we go. But why did you not let me save you, Avis? Why did you entrust your precious life to another doctor? An ignorant impostor who knows not how to read the stars to judge an illness. Oh, my beloved Avis. Why did you die before I had the chance to... <laughs> Aww. Who is to blame for the death of my beloved Avis? Kind of, kind of me, but also kind of her. She, she no listen. Why, why you no listen? HY, HY says stay in the trees. Why you no listen? Okay, I'm sorry. That's a really, really old Dota reference, but I haven't done it in a very long time. So forgive me. <laughs> yes, it's always about the loins in Omnia. I caused this tragedy by being aggressive and careless in my behavior toward Avis. Well, fucking yeah. Mars in retrograde represents a reversal due to aggression. Jupiter in detriment in retrograde represents a reversal due to carelessness. God is punishing me for not having been a more pleasant romantic partner for Avis. Moon. Woman. 
Venus exalted in Pisces suggests being a more pleasant romantic partner. B. Lies and rumors circulating about Avis concerning her Catholic faith and mayhap even our affair provoked anxious passions that exacerbated her illness. I don't think that's true. Neptune in retrograde presents, represents deception. Uh, Avis lavished such attention and care on her child. She neglected her own health. Saturn exalted in Libra represents frugality. New. No. What about this? Ava's surprising decision to see a new doctor. Uranus uh, represents a surprising event. Pluto is death. Ava's death was the fault of a licensed doctor with a medical degree. <laughs> Which is really funny. Sun is an authority figure. Mercury represents education. So what do you guys think? Should I blame myself? Slash God? Or should I blame the new doctor? Damn you and your medical degree. Because, I mean, technically the new doctor should have been able to cure her. It couldn't possibly be your fault. I know, right? Should you be JD or should you be Dr. Cox? <laughs> oh, jeez. That's, that's a reference I understand. But yeah, I mean... We, we should have made her listen to our diagnosis. Like, we were, we were supposed to be kinder to her, and we were like, yes, next time we'll be more kind to her. And then, like, we, she thought the wrong thing and wouldn't listen, but we also should have, like... Stand in front of the door. Make sure she can't go anywhere and tell her at least how to cure her illness. But honestly, blame either doctor. He should have been able to diagnose her properly, especially with a medical license. So I don't think it's entirely unfair to blame the other doctor. Let's go with C. Friendly. Then tis as I thought. My Avis was a victim of London's corrupt medical establishment. A bright star brought down by a so-called doctor who hides his lack of skill behind a, a mere piece of parchment with the words medical license writ upon it. A qualification granted him by men of the College of Physicians with whom he doubtless went to school. Fire upon the lot of them! May God punish that band of quacksalvers for the suffering they have wrought, and if not God, then why? I shall avenge you, Avis. Mark me, my dearest love. I shall make those doctors pay for their crimes. Damn. Are we gonna infiltrate from within? I did wish to know who to blame for the death of my beloved Avis. I judged that the licensed doctor who treated Avis in her final hours is to blame for her death. To be fair, we don't know what he diagnosed her with. But, you know, whatever. People do weird things in grief. It's fine. Oh, Avis, if I summon my spirit guides to aid me, would you consent to speak to me from beyond the grave? When you are shook by something in a book where it says that you might have some rare malady, see Dr. Foreman, be sure to inform him you have it on very good authority. Oh, it's our little hypochondriac. Ah, good day, Mr. Mag. What brings you? I am exceeding ill, Dr. Foreman. Verily I am. And you know my wife. She is refusing to hear anything about it. Tis but another of your delusions, Nicholas, she says. She will not even look at it. Uh, look at what? Oh, I see. Uh, you may pull up your breeches now. Uh, pray let me examine you more closely. Uh, raise your chin, if you please. Now, loosen your garter and remove your stocking. Aye, I am afeard this verily is grave. Most grave indeed. Tis? Verily? I believe so. But we must have it confirmed by the stars. Let us consult them now. Okay. What explains these swellings that have arisen on various parts of Nicholas Mug's body? So, he's got a swollen dick. <laughs> or groin. He's got a swollen groin ankle and neck 
I don't know. Oh, pustulous swellings. That's gross. Gemini? Ruler of the arms. Mug has scrofula. I just watered myself, but chat should too. A disease characterized by swellings and nodules around the lymph nodes and behind the knees. Uh, Mars in retrograde indicates a mild imbalance of yellow bile. Jupiter in detriment in retrograde indicates a mild deficiency of the blood. Or, Libra. Mug has the plague, a disease characterized by swellings and boils behind the ears, under the armpits, and in the groin. Uh, this indicates a severe imbalance of black bile. Well, this has groin. And we said lift your chin, so it could have been behind the ears, I guess. But we didn't look at his armpits, we looked at his leg. I actually don't know which to pick. N no worries, JP, you're allowed to lurk. Don't know if the medical term would be dick. <laughs> no, of course not. This is a great popularization to have us understand. Oh yeah. Because I know you guys are, are plebs. And you're not very smart. So I, I have to dumb it down for you. I can't just say groin. I have to say, it's his wiener. It's his dick. <laughs> but pustulous swellings. This, I don't think this is pussy. I think he's got the fucking plague. Because didn't the plague come back? We've already just established the medical term is eggplant. Yes, excuse me, excuse me, bear. Labor ruler of the skin. Imbalance of black bile. Swellings and boils. I think they're pussy. I think he's got plague. I'm gonna go with plague. You are gravely ill with the plague. It is oft fatal, but you are in good hands. For during the Great Plague of 92, I was able to save many a soul from the grave with my famous strong water. A moment, if you please, while I retrieve it from my cabinet. But, sir, un unhand it, sir. The, the dosage is very precise. You, you must not... Uh, nay, nay, not the whole bottle. <laughs> Knock it out of his God, hands. Man, what have you done? Methinks... Methinks I am dying. Get him some oh, charcoal! Wow. A fatal dose. Alas, I am sorry for it, sir, but you were never meant to drink so much of it. Oh, may God forgive me. Nay, nay, do not blame yourself, Is doctor. he going to write with his dying uh, Thank death? you heartily, for at last all shall know. My wife, my friends, how wrong they were, and how I did speak true. <laughs> Well, William! He's, he's thrilled. William! Oh, curse it, where is that feckless manservant of mine? William! Uh, go forth and fetch the vicar! Does this mean we're not gonna get a letter? We're not, we're not gonna get a, a letter, huh? The querent did present with swellings on various parts of his body. I did diagnose the plague and prescribed a dose of my strong water as treatment, but the querent did prescribe himself many more doses and died thereof. This was the final consultant for this querent. Well, fuck. Mr. Foreman, you have been called before this assembly of the College of Physicians to answer the charge of practicing medicine without a medical license. What have you to say in your defense? Would you deny practicing medicine, sir? Why, no, I would not deny it. My practice is well known. Indeed, since I helped cure the plague of 92 with my strong water- Then you admit you have committed this most grievous offense. Ah, well, tis true I'm not technically licensed, but I fail to see how- You fail to see? Then permit me to enlighten you, sir. A medical license assures the residents of London that a physician has the necessary education and skill to treat them. By practicing without qualification, you have not only broken the law, you have endangered the lives of your patients. Indeed, we have received reports that a man by the name of Nicholas Mugg, a wig maker of Silver Street, has lately died under your care. 
Aye, well, that was most lamentable, but not my fault, sir. Mr. Mug took a far greater dose of my strong water than I advised him to. He chose the dosage himself. In truth, one might say that the cause of death in this instance was, well, Nicholas Mug practicing without a medical license. That is cheeky. <laughs> Silence, Mr. Foreman! Your impudent japery may well be suffered by your patience, but it will not be tolerated here. I do apologize, my, uh, Mr. Smith. Besides the death of this patient, we have gathered ample evidence of your malpractice, Mr. Foreman. Indeed, we have had this illegal operation of yours under observation for quite some time. Twas you, Ricardo Ferraro, the merchant from Venice. All along he was you, Richard Smith, the Queen's royal physician. Then I take it, Mr. Smith, you were unsatisfied with the medical care I gave you? Sir, we are well aware of your occult practices. What you so boldly call medical care was naught but advice conjured up by means of dark magic. You have no understanding of physic or astrology. But, but my knowledge of both physic and astrology is unparalleled. <laughs> if that is so, then doubtless you will happily submit to having your knowledge examined before- Oh shit! Day. This is getting intense. Which, oh, which planet or star represents authority? It's the sun. I've been paying attention. Men are for Mars. Women are for, that's not astrology. Well, in, in this case it is. Women are represented by Venus a lot. Phlegm is hot and moist. I mean, I think that's just common knowledge. That's grody. Um... But yeah, in terms of, I think it's hard. Damn it! Which zodiac rules over the privy parts? It's Scorpio. <laughs> Silence. Simon okay, so Foreman, I got one wrong. You have failed, Constable. Shackle this man and take him from hence to jail. But sir, uh, this is most unjust. Uh, pray afford me the chance to uh, unhand me, you rogue. But I got three out of four. 75% is a good cure rate. Sir, I am happy to inform you that I have secured your release from jail by way of my friendship with Mistress Maud Smith, wife of the president of the College of Physicians. We have contrived to have her husband believe that you enjoy the favor of John Whitgift, the Archbishop of Canterbury, and that the Archbishop plans to grant you a medical license. But whilst you will be freed this day, our ruse will not hold for long. Maud says the college intends to write to the Archbishop to warn him that you are a charlatan and urge him not to grant you a license. Most assured, your most assured friend and querent, Alice Blog, she loves us. In 75% of cases, like to 100% correct. I am! Alice Blog, she feels no shame, and for so good is she to blame. If we were her, we'd do the same. Alice Blog, she feels no shame. You tell him, Alice. Ah, good day, Mistress Blog. Uh, before we start, I must thank you for having used your influence to help me resolve my uh, recent difficulties. Say nothing of it. Those doctors and their college of physicians. Naught but a band of piss-pot sniffing bullies, so they are. Besides, I needed you out of prison so that you might read the stars for me. I see. And what would you have me advise you on? What know you of Richard Bancroft, the Bishop of London? Ah, uh, not much, in truth. But I did attend the Easter service at St. Paul's. I found the bishop's sermon on the virtues of chastity and abstinence most compelling. Why, you know him well? Not very well as yet. I was seated beside him at an Episcopal dinner Saturday mm. last. We discoursed a while. Bishop Bancroft is a most charming man. I see. But there was a moment when we did both reach for the brandy decanter. Our did eyes you brush met fingers? I... Well... I felt something. Was it his finger? Ah, it was a spark between you and the bishop? You or felt a certain frisson in the air? <laughs> Nay, I felt a certain hand up my skirts, more like. Damn! His grace put his hand up your skirts. Madam, may I say how... Save your congratulations, Foreman. The bishop's not in the bag yet. Hence why I am come to you. 
Now that I have piqued his interest, I would have the stars tell me how to secure it. Ah, then you wish to pursue an amorous affair with Bishop Bancroft. But, but what of your husband, Dean Blagg? Oh, do not speak to me of my husband. Thomas Blagg is not fit to secure his wife's future. He is not fit for many of his marital duties, truth be told. But you did warn me of Blagg's financial ruin, and for that I am grateful. Forsooth, I am glad I was able to be of service to you, Mistress Blagg. Uh, speaking of such, let us press on with this day's readings, if you please. Of course. Let us consult the stars. How may Mistress Blagg secure the lasting affections of Richard Bancroft, the Bishop of London? Can I just say how impressive it is to get your hand up a skirt like that? You know how many fucking petticoats are under there? Everyone would know. Everyone would fucking know. Unless you're only going for ankle with your ankle. Let me see a thing. Not received, not received. Dang it. I was so close. Very close with Robert. We're getting there with Alice. I don't know if I'm going to have enough. Sybil's not been back. Oh yeah, we've got plenty with her. Yeah, we, we banged her last time. Must have practiced. It's that's fucking impressive. I'm I'm impressed. All right. Alice should commit adultery with the bishop while he was a, he is away from home. Mars falling in cancer suggests a betrayal. Alice should lie to the bishop by telling him he is with uh, with child his child. Mars falling in Pisces recommends lying. If Alice changes her approach and exercises restraint, the good angels will aid her in her plans. Saturn in retrograde advises constraint and change of direction. Alice's chances of romantic success will be enhanced if she adopts, adopts a quiet, demure manner. I don't think so. This suggests being well-mannered. Moon exalted in Taurus. Venus domicile in Taurus represents quietness. Responsible thing to do would be to tell Alice some hard truths and afford her some perspective. Her reaction to this might be unpredictable. Uh, sun exalted in Aries advised being truthful. Pluto represents perspective and transformation. Uranus represents unpredictable events. Or C. Engaging in sin would go against Alice's Christian instincts. Neptune in retrograde suggests Alice is, Alice is going against her instincts. No, her instincts are to bang. Alice is being careless with her husband's legacy. Jupiter put in detriment by Gemini. Let's go with A. Go for it. Bang a lang. That's what he wants. Ah, the star suggests the most ingenious plan for ensnaring the bishop, Mistress Blagg. Oh, verily. Aye, tis most cunning. At first, you must offer him your. Uh, tender favors, and then, several weeks following this encounter, you must go to him and tell him you are with child. If the bishop be a man of sentiment, the news will doubtless make him feel bound to you. Hmm. I own that such a ruse could work. Tis hardly ingenious, though, is it? Half the mothers in London give their daughters such advice. Do they indeed? Uh, well, there is more. The star suggests you will find occasion for such an encounter while the bishop is away from home on business. Mayhap you will arrange a discreet assignation for his next visit to the archbishop's palace in Lambeth. Well, my honor, that is not a bad idea. In sooth, I think it may do very well. And get away from well, your business. As it is oft said, that which does occur at Lambeth Palace does bide at Lambeth Palace. <laughs> Indeed. How very... Intriguing. I gotta get me to Lambeth Palace. Uh, pray tell me of these goings on at Lambeth Palace. T yeah, tell us. The querent did wish to know how she might secure the lasting affections of Richard Bancroft, the Bishop of London. I did advise the querent lie with the bishop, uh, to lie with the bishop, and then tell him she is with child, his child. Methinks the pl the the querent was a little pleased with me for this reading I gave. This day, coitus post consolatio, as, as usual. Oof, methinks I put my farthing gale back on the wrong way round. Mayhap I will dash into an alleyway to adjust it. That's a classy lady. 
That is so clever. God, I love this game. Good day, sir, and well met. Oh, pray tell, did you secure the hand of the golden-haired maiden? Yea, verily I did. Though it is no thanks to you, foreman. For when I told the maid's father of her uncle's designs upon her person, it set the household all a rage. The mother even called me a fat-brained shade lobber. It was only when I told them not to speak so ill to a man whose income is one thousand pounds a year that the family was silenced. The father then declared that a coin is still a coin, no matter it be in the purse of a beef-witted sock nozzle, and promised me his daughter's hand in marriage. I was made the happiest of men. Then I must congratulate you on your forthcoming nuptials. Uh, will you be having a summer wedding, or...? Congratulate me? Do not congratulate me, foreman, for I am the unhappiest of men. Uh... It was but a day after our engagement was announced that my love became afflicted with the smallpox. Naturally, I was all a terror. Would she perish? So wretched was I with fear, I almost died of fright. Aye, naturally. Uh, smallpox is a most terrible disease. I intend to write a small treatise on the subject. But then, alas, fate struck the cruelest of blows upon my soul. Oh, verily. Poor girl, may she rest in peace, or re-squeeze in patchy, as we Latin scholars say. What? Squeeze? Nay, death would have been a mercy. For once cured, the maid arose from her sickbed bearing hideous scars. Her once fair cheeks thus so cratered to make the very moon wane with envy. I see. And now you wish to extract yourself from your engagement, I presume? Naturally. But her brother and father are fearsome men with a taste for rough sports, and her mother's tongue is as sharp as a barber's blade. I worry that my breach of promise may be taken ill. Then let me see if I may fathom the family's reaction from the stars. What will become of breaking your engagement to this once mm. fair, now hook-scarred maid? I don't think this is going to go too well for him. Pretty late here, and I gotta get used to new daylight savings time, so I'm gonna head off. All right, Bear, thank you so much for hanging out with us. I hope you have a good sleep and a good day tomorrow, and we will see you another time, my dear. And, uh, yeah, have a good one. Thank you, thank you. What will happen when I end my engagement? Well, more has cause for hope regarding the young lady's forgiveness. The moon represents the woman. The maiden will bear the disillusion of her engagement with quiet grace. Venus domicile in Taurus represents a pleasant romantic partner. Maiden's father is being careless with his legacy. Indeed, it was most careless of him to betroth his daughter to such a mump-headed snatch grabber. This, uh, the sun represents a mature man. Jupiter in detriment in Gemini indicates carelessness. Or... It would be intelligent to seek resolution in a foreign country. Mercury represents intelligence. God's punishment is on the way, with Neptune and Mars bringing confusion and war. Moore's breach of promise may result in a sudden change of fortune. His death. Dun, dun, dun. Hmm. Yeah, we're not doing so hot with him anymore. Fuck. So, hey, you're probably going to die if you do this. Or... They'll be understanding because they don't like you. I don't know. 
I'm not sure what to do here. Hmm. Resolution in a foreign country. I don't know. Yeah, she probably won't care. But... Huh. Let's tell him you gon' die, maybe. I don't know. I have no idea what to pick in this situation. The star suggests you have much to fear from this family. Aye, you must flee England at once. Uh, for according to my precise calculations, based on the current alignment of the planets... Uh, let me see now. Yes, you will be branded a cuckborn snatch-grabbing knave of the lowest order, uh, who deserves to be disemboweled with a pudding spoon. That's very specific. That is, if I'm not mistaken. <gasps> and not even God is on your side, for it is his plan that you may be dragged into a, a foggy-headed confusion so as to render you defenseless against the family's dark intentions. Oh, good sir. You must heed my warning and never show your face in London lest you be set upon most violently. God's blood! I must flee England's shores and never show my face, you say? But whither shall I go? Hold, I have it. Be it not carnival season in Venice, when citizens do hide their faces behind masks? Oh, and with such style. I thank you, Foreman, oh, for you it. have been most helpful. I must fly at once to my tailor to be measured for the latest Venetian fashions. I, yeah, I can't help you with that. All I can help you with is glassware when it comes to Venet Venetian trends. Uh, I did advise the current to leave England for a time to be safe from the wrath of the Maiden's family. Uh, I think he's pleased. I shall simply tell Father I wish to finish my education with a tour of Roman antiquities. Glory. Who's this? This is a new person. Be there anyone at home? Is it? Uh, by the saints, uh, tis none other than Archbishop John Whitgift. Uh, your grace, I am most honoured by this most unexpected visit. Truly, tis most unexpected, as I just so happen to be passing by. Indeed, I was riding by in my carriage when I found myself struck ill. My chaplain did suggest I take rest at the nearest residence, which did so happen to be this small dwelling. <laughs> Forsooth, these rooms have the look of a, of a physician's consulting chambers. Mayhap you are a doctor. If that be true, then praise be to God for this happy coincidence. A most fortunate coincidence indeed. I am Simon Foreman, a doctor of astrology and physic. At your service, your grace. Well then, Doctor, um, uh, uh, Doctor Foreman, was it? Uh, perchance you will tell me what ails me. I, I feel a kind of pain and heaviness in my side, and I know not if this be related, but my skin has of late become most unattractive in appearance. Hmm. Pain in the right side of the body and sallowness of the skin? Her Majesty did remark upon it most wittily the other day at a meeting of the Privy Council. Your face does serve as a warning to us all, Archbishop. Damn. Her Majesty the Queen, fairly. Uh, Brutal. A moment, if I may, Your Grace, while I consult the stars. What does cause the suffering of His Grace, the most reverend John Whitgift, the Archbishop of Canterbury? 
Let's find out. Pain in his side and sallowness of the skin. Jaundice, that's what I thought. Sagittarius liver, li ruler of the liver. The moon suggests the illness is temporary. Condition characterized by color seeping into the skin when the tube connecting the gallbladder to the liver is blocked. Or Leo, suffering from a cardiac passion characterized by grievous pain in the heart and gnawing sensations throughout the body. That's on the left-hand side. That they would, he would probably be feeling pain when it's heart things, isn't it? The right hands, or wait. Like when someone has a stroke, isn't it the left hand side of their face? Like goes, anyway, I think he's got jaundice. That's what they said, sallowness of the skin. So that's what I was thinking anyway, before I saw the options, but I didn't know that it could be painful. But I, I think he's jaundiced. Sagittarius. You are afflicted with jaundice, your grace. Yellow bile has seeped into your skin, causing it to become yellow-hued in appearance. Tis the jaundice, is it? I see. Pray, have a servant boil this pouch of herbs in water. The liquor is to be injected up the fundament once each day. Up the fundament. It should la, la, la. draw the collar away from your skin and into your bowels. Uh, William! Excellent. I will have my chaplain see to it. My, my. Who do we have here? Before he likes you take William. Your baby, your breast, I would have my manservant William let blood from your right arm. Indeed. Very well, then. Before you depart, Your Grace, uh, perchance I might trouble you with a uh, request of my own. Good day, sir. My chaplain will settle payment with you anon. We have been told that William is very handsome. The querent did present with symptoms of pain in his right side and yellow-colored skin. I did advise the querent that he was suffering from jaundice. For treatment, I prescribed bloodletting and an enema. Methinks the querent is most pleased with the reading I gave today. Yes, I'm sure it's the reading and not the, uh, the spry young lad who is incredibly handsome. William Buck, I think he said his manservant's name was. I wonder how much Foreman pays him. Is he going to steal my servant? Ouch, too real. Hey, Nanalai, how are you doing? This is Astrologaster. It is a wonderful narrative story where you are Simon Foreman, and we're trying to... We're treating patients and trying to get letters of recommendation so we can obtain a medical license. Uh, but we use astrology to determine people's sickness, and it's set in the times of Shakespeare, and Good it's amazing. Good day, my lord, and well met. Indeed, methinks I have not seen your lordship since, since last year, before you set off with Sir Walter Raleigh to capture those Spanish treasure ships. Ah, yes. Doubtless you heard what became of that expedition. The town criers called it Raleigh and Essex's gold piracy fail, declaring it the biggest balls up since the English biggest Armada. Aye, it was most ill mannered of them, if I may remark. The directions you gave me were entirely wrong, for we never came across the Spanish fleet. Indeed, we found ourselves becalmed in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Raleigh blames me for it, and although I did explain to him that it was entirely your fault, as I had gotten the navigational coordinates from you, that seemed to bother him even more. My lord, I am full sorry for any Thanks. error I may have made in my calculations. Uh, forsooth, I pray I may assist you better this day. What is it you would ask of the stars? I would have you tell me how I might regain the favour of the Queen. Indeed, tis strange she has not yet gotten over her displeasure, for the incident did occur many months ago. You stole and her navy! every intention of returning her warships, filled to the brim with gold, I might add. Besides, how in the devil's name were we supposed to know the King of Spain would choose that very same month to invade England? Huh! I have not the power to predict the future. Uh, well, nay, but I have, my lord, if you had asked me to. Verily, it is not to be borne. Only last week, at a meeting of the Privy Council, during a minor disagreement regarding the Catholic rebellion in Ireland, she called me an impudent lordsplainer, whereupon she rose from her chair and mollywopped me in the face. I half yeah. drew my sword upon her. 
You mean the Queen? Aye, indeed. Her behaviour was most shocking. I even asked the royal physician whether she may have lost her mind. She is, after all, most elderly. Oh, no. But Mr. Smith assures me she is in very fine health and is in full control of her faculties. Her Majesty's behaviour is a mystery indeed, although mayhap it should not surprise us. A man's reason is oft insufficient to fathom the workings of the feminine mind, and, in such cases, he may have little choice but to call upon divine wisdom. To wit, let us see what the stars can tell us. She also... What must Lord oh, Devereux do done. to regain the Queen's favour? Take her to see a play and take her to go bear baiting. She loves bear baiting. I'm not joking. That is a that is a historical fact. Um, yeah, I know he was he was closer before this. How do you find these types of games? Um, I saw this game not at this PAX East, but the one before, and it sounded perfect for me. So when I saw that it was on Game Pass, I played it immediately. And I'm keeping it on my wish list because I would love to, to own this game. It's it's too good. No, bear baiting. Where you take a dog and put it in an arena with a bear. I, th I think it's a dog. And you, you, uh, you put it in an arena with a bear and you provoke the bear into getting angry. And you're like, let the bear tear the dog apart. Something like that. But it was something that actual real life Queen Elizabeth loved. I learned that when I was in London, actually. All right, let's see. Devereux may reverse his change in fortune by turning his working relationship with the queen into a sexual one. I don't think she's into him. Uranus in retrograde indicates change of fortune being reversed. Pluto in retrograde advises a reversal achieved through sexual intimacy. Devereux's ambitions may be achieved if he is gentle. Moon exalted in Taurus advised gentleness. No, it is awful, but she loved it. Is basmati rice much different from white in terms of taste? I think it's just thinner, but no, not taste-wise. Uh, Venus, this represents a romantic partner, the queen. Neptune suggests deception. Devereux should be pretend to be in love with the queen. Yeah, no. Uh, let's see what other options are. Devereux should not act in haste. She sh he should make an intelligent suggestion to mount a military campaign in a foreign country. Mars in detriment in Libra indicates violence. Mercury is intelligence. Saturn exalted in Libra advises patience. Devereux should assume a position of authority in keeping with his birthright as a peer of the realm. Or Devereux must show the queen he is a loyal man who does his duty. Yeah, let's go with this one. You prefer your version? Yeah. To regain the queen's favor, you must demonstrate your fealty to her. Your loyalty as a peer of the realm who sits on her privy council. To this end, the stars suggest you offer to lead a military campaign to put down this Catholic rebellion in Ireland. Your lordship is, after all, a great military leader. What better man for such a task than the hero of Cadiz? Verily, tis no ill idea. Tis no ill idea at all. Yes, indeed, I shall offer to put down the Irish for her. Forsooth, how difficult could such a mission be? I shall quickly defeat those fen-sucking muck savages and be back home by Christmas. Huzzah! Huzzah! Godspeed, my lord. I hope this gave me enough favor. Come on, 35. Give me that 35. The querent did wish to know what he could do to regain the queen's favor. I did advise the querent to offer to lead a military campaign to put down the Irish rebellion. Methinks the querent was a little pleased. Balls. Did you say you don't own the game? No, I'm playing it on Xbox Game Pass for PC. What's parboiled? Yeah, I don't know what that is. The Irish are idiot drunkards, thus easy to vanquish. We English would not make jest about the Irish if this were not so. Oh, honey. It's not gonna end well. It is a fruit of Mary, for her views they make him sick. A 
But Brady does not tell her that she punch him in the Punch him in the anus. Good day, Mistress Payne. How may I help you this day? Blessed day, Dr. Foreman. I am just come from taking my niece to visit Rochester Cathedral. Thomas Blogg is the cathedral's dean, I believe. Know you of Dean Blogg? Aye, I know something of him. Verily, that man is a model to us all. Under his stewardship, the cathedral's decorative furnishings have been stripped away. He has even replaced the silver candlesticks with it. pewter. He stole Such it. Such pious modesty in the sight of God. Has he indeed? How very he interesting. He fucking stole it. And uh, godly, yes. Uh, but what is it that brings you this day? Before I begin upon my business, Dr. Foreman, I must insist you acknowledge your failings. You were most wrong to frighten me with these notions of England I being invaded by that. the Spanish. I ah, said yes, that... that. Though, to be fair, I do not think anybody could have predicted the storm that sunk the Spanish ships. It was most unexpected. And we must give thanks to God for the divine vengeance he wrought upon the heretics. I did hear that by morning our beaches were verily littered with the corpses of Spanish sailors. Praise be to the Lord, his glory to behold. Ah, uh, yes, praise be. But all the same... You seem anxious this day, Mistress Payne. What is troubling you? Indeed, I am troubled, Dr. Foreman. I fear for the Queen's health. Everyone is saying that as she is exceeding old, she is soon to die. Ah, yes, I quite understand your feelings, madam. How we love our good Queen Bessie. Long may she reign. <laughs> uh, but will she? That is the question, is it not? For she cannot live forever, and when at last she does expire... We shall be stricken with such lamentation and grief. Mayhap you, but not I. Elizabeth Tudor is naught but a septed whore, but still a whore who presides over the Church of England and keeps Rome at bay. And without an heir, who knows what manner of foreigner may succeed her when she dies? For all we know, he may flood the land with foul popery. Uh, foul popery? I take it you do not care for dried floral arrangements. Uh, but, madam, surely fresh flowers are more customary at royal funerals. Did you not heed me, Mr. Foreman? I wish to know whether the English throne is safe from a Catholic successor. Ah, yes, of course. Uh, then let us consult the stars. Is our Queen's long reign in danger of ending soon? And, if so, do we risk a Catholic succeeding her to the throne? I don't remember my history well enough. But to be fair, it's not, it's not fair that she got mad at me for what I said about the ships, because she asked, will the English Navy ships return in time to stop the Spanish Armada? And I said no, but I also said that barring a great miracle, and we had the miracle. So I did, and I never said that, no, they're gonna overrun us. It's not fair. Parsley Creek pre-cooked in its inedible husk before being processed. Huh, okay. So yeah, she is not impressed with us at all. <sighs> Poop. All right, what you want? Is a Catholic soon to succeed the English throne? I don't remember. How are we doing? We're not doing great. We still only have two letters of recommendation. We need eight. The queen is in love. The moon represents a woman, Queen Elizabeth. An unexpected pregnancy will bring new life to the royal Tudor line. Okay. Read the stars. The queen's legacy is safe even if she dies. Her successor will remain head of the English church and loyal to the Anglican faith. Trooper exalted in can't, uh, I don't remember. I really don't remember. Bonds between nations will be creatively disrupted with violence and austerity will be imposed as a result. Mercury shows creativity. Saturn exalted in Libra. Mars in detriment in Libra suggests violence. Cooperation offered by a foreign country is not what it seems. This doubtless represents England's ally, King James of Scotland. 
Uh, Venus represents cooperation. Neptune indicates deception. I don't remember my history well enough. I definitely don't think she pregnant. Because she's very old. And I don't think she is in love with anybody either. I don't remember who succeeded Queen Elizabeth. Cooperation offered by foreign countries, not what it seems. Well, I think I remember that, um, oh god, I'm trying to remember my history and I don't recall. Did, didn't they change religion at that point? I really don't remember. It, they just, they changed every five seconds, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure. But I, I don't remember, like I said, I don't remember if they stayed Catholic. Or not Catholic, if they changed to being, I forget what she, what she wants. <laughs> There's too many religions that are similar and I just don't, I don't fucking know. But I, if I recall correctly, oh God, she's Anglican. But which is—is is that Catholic or Protestant? Catholic. I can't remember if, if Anglican means what exactly. I forget. Yeah, I'm gonna go with this one, because I feel like this is legit. If, if I remember my Outlander well enough, there's the whole uh, Scottish Rebellion and they don't want to put Prince Charles on the throne or something. Anglican is Protestant. Right, okay. Okay. I'm gonna go with C. I don't fucking know. I, my brain is not. I am I'm, afraid I'm dead the now. stars say nothing of how much longer Elizabeth Tudor's reign will last. But when our queen finally does expire, it will be most ill for us. For her successor will take England to war and tax us mightily to pay for it. We have naught to look forward to but a future of violence and austerity. I am sorry to be the bearer of such lamentable tidings, madam. Lamentable? I suppose it might be. It would depend on whether English blood is to be spilled in the righteous service of God or in service of the Antichrist in Rome. To which is our new sovereign to keep to the English church, or will he be a Roman Catholic, Dr. Foreman? My chart is not clear on this question, though it does indicate that Elizabeth's most likely successor, King James of Scotland, has a deceitful nature. Mayhap he hides secret Romish sympathies? Mayhap? Mayhap is no answer at all. Verily, Dr. Foreman, your stars have been of very little use to me this day. Very little use indeed. Well, she hates me. Hey, man bon, how are you doing? This most British game ever? Hell yeah, it is. It's set in London in the uh, 1590s. I think we just, did we roll over into the 1600s? We'll, we'll find out just now. No, not quite. We're still in 1958. 
The querent did wish to know whether England is soon to be ruled over by a Catholic king or queen. I did foretell of war, uh, of war, of war and higher taxes upon Queen Elizabeth's death, but said nothing of whether a, or not a Catholic would succeed to the throne. Methinks the querent took my advice a little ill. Hash browns. I thought it was just cake or death. Instead of telling the truth and the most rational solution, you should probably tell them what they want to hear. I know, and I meant to if, if, at first, but but it's too hard for me to not. I must abide by the truth. The weather is lovely this day. Mayhap I take my niece to see the hangings in Tyburn. All right. Rejoice! Rejoice in the Seems as rumored to have Catholic sympathies. Yeah. To his guests for dinner. Rejoice, rejoice in the love and be at the first swan Ooh, beef and swan pie. Okay. It is time for me to go. I have a really, really bad headache, and I've been streaming for six hours now. Uh, we will finish this game on Tuesday. I'm going to start at 9 a.m. Yeah, I'm sure he did come back for William. I don't doubt that one bit. Um, so yeah, we've only gotten two letters. Two of them were not received. He died before he could write me a letter. I thought we impressed Ricardo, but he was, he was mad at us. So yeah, we, well, we're likely to get one from Alice and Robert and Sybil if we ever see her again. Um, yeah, th th things are not looking good for us here. But it is definitely time for me to go because I'm, I'm tired and hungry. So I'm going to go eat something. Um, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Let's go find somebody to raid. If you don't know how a raid works, I will tell you how it works. I will give you somebody's channel to go be in and load up their stream before I end. We're doing it old school. Um, and uh, then we're going to copy and paste a raid message and spam it in that other person's chat. Okay. Now. Uh, do you want to see... And I hope you all will come with me, show support for the Court of the Hype, and uh, maybe check out somebody new who you haven't seen. It only takes a couple of extra minutes, and then if you've got other places you need to go, go for it. Um, so, do you want to see Doom Eternal, Hollow Knight, Drawful 2, or Animal Crossing? Pick one of the above because I've got too many delightful people Manbon's yelling for Animal Crossing what about the rest of you guys Hollow Knight Doom okay none of you are helpful <laughs> uh, I think I got two for Doom anyone else before I, I make a decision a decision. Well. Hollow Doom Night Horizon. Yes, not helpful. Okay, great. Um, so we are going to raid Daniel the Demon. He's playing Doom. And you will want to be there for this raid. He does a special thing and you're not going to want to miss it and he's awesome and uh super nice guy very funny and um yeah so let's go over i want you to go be in his channel right now right 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 now wait for me to post the message and then spam that shit um here is the raid message if you are a patron of the hype aka a sub Use the top one that says patrons. If not, use the bottom one that just has those scorpion 
emotes, and maybe someday I'll be partnered so that we can have scorpion meerkat emotes to go with the, the other scorpions. Anyway, I digress. Thank you. Have a... Thank you so, so much for hanging out with me today. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Let's go see Daniel and uh, have a great rest of your weekend. I'll be back tomorrow with more with Elite Dangerous and my brand new Hotas! Oh my god, I'm so excited! Okay, have a good one, guys. I'll see you later. Ooh, and don't forget, if you're not in the Discord, to be in there. There's good shit in there. All right, bye, friends! I'll see you in Daniel's stream.